When you're dealing with a circle graph, you're dealing with a circle, which means you have a 360 degree angle setup to deal with. And if you're giving categories with percents, you have to turn these percents into degrees that go into the 360 degrees of the circle. Now typically, all the categories should add up to 360 degrees when you add them. And that's one way to check. So let's total this. I'm also going to total my percents to make sure they didn't leave out any other categories that I should know about. So 10, 30, 80, 90, and then the two fives. Yes, they have given you 100% of the information. So nothing's missing from here. But we want to write each of these percents as degrees of a circle. Now they give you 15% first, but don't be afraid to change the order up and look at the other options. It seems to me that 10% would be the easiest place to start. And what you're really going to do is find 10% of 360. When I find 10% of something, I take the total and divide it by 10. And that gives me 10%. So if I want to know what 10% is, I can just do the total 360 degrees divided by 10 and that gives me 36 degrees. Now, what do I have to next? Well, I think the next logical step is to go to 20% because that will be double the 10%. So if 10% is 36 degrees, 20% is double of that, or 72 degrees. I would go for 15% next because I think of 15% as 15 equaling 10 and 5. So we know 10% is 36 degrees, so 5% should be half of that. So really, 15% is just the 36 degrees plus half of 36, which is 18. So 36 degrees plus 18 degrees is 54 degrees. And to find 55%, we can go through a similar process as we did with 15%, or since there's only one category left, Th that mystery number has to equal whatever's left over. So I want to do that, use that method. 54 plus 72 plus 36 equals 162. Uh, I did 70 plus 30 is 100. 50, and then 4 and 6, 70, 60, and then 2 more, 62. So 162 degrees have been used so far in the circle. If there are 360 degrees total, I want to take away what I used so far to find out what's left. So 360 minus 162. 360 minus 100 is 260. Minus another 60 is 200. Minus 2 is 198 degrees, which is the measure of special activities. So altogether, if I didn't make any mistakes, these four numbers should add up to 300 and 60 degrees. Since these all add up to 360 degrees, I know I'm right. Um, <clears throat> take two. So once we check that they all equal 360 degrees, we're ready to move forward. Another technique I could have used instead of the one I did here was to use proportions, which may um, seem difficult, but in fact very helpful for more complicated percents. How could this work? Well, 10% Let's say I was starting with the same spot, 10%. 10% is just 10 out of 100. And I'm saying that equals some number out of 360 degrees. So if I could solve this proportion, I could figure out what 10% should be out of 360. How would I solve this? I would realize that a 100 is 10 times bigger than 10. And since this fraction is equal, 360 degrees has to be 10 times bigger than whatever number is up here. So how can I find that? Well, x should be smaller than this because the de denominator is 10 times bigger. So I'm going to divide 360 by 10 and get 36. So for 10%, my degrees should be 36. Once you have all this information, you want to be able to graph it. And you're given a circle graph and a protractor and you also have a ruler. So let's use those three tools to graph. Sometimes when you move the protractor over you'll realize that it's much smaller than the circle. That's not a big deal. 
Um, all you have to do is mark your angles and then extend the lines with a ruler. And I'll show you what I mean. So let's start with um, our top our top measurement, which is 54 degrees. And to measure 54 degrees, there are two rows of numbers, the outer row and the inner row. Um, you can use either one, but just realize that if you use the outer row, your zero number is here. So your angle is going to open this way. And as you open it, the number should go up. But if you start over here and make this zero, the reverse will be true. Let's see if we can get this to work that way. If you start on this side, and this is your zero degrees, you would use the inner track to measure. Does it matter which track you're using? Sometimes, but for the most case, you can make a choice. Just remember which track you're using, the outer or inner. So we'll measure 54 degrees, about here. And again, the protractor is smaller than the circle. So all we need to do when we're marking our lines is mark a line from the outer edge. Now that we have our 54 degree measurement, we need to mark it. To mark an angle on a protractor, we should draw a line across the bottom. Now when I say bottom, take a look at what I mean. I don't mean down here at the very bottom of the protractor, but wherever the line is at zero. If zero is at the bottom of your protractor, that's where your line will go. But our zero is right here. So make a line at zero. And then our second line, we just take a ruler and start at the middle and extend it all the way up here. A ruler will do that for us. Now if you notice I'm a little bit off here, you want to be as accurate as possible. They give you three degrees of freedom on our test, but we'll try to be as accurate as possible. So now I have my first angle marked, 54 degrees, and that's for the newsletter category. Once you have the angle drawn out for your section, what you should do is label it. Give it the name of the category, this is our newsletter category, and put the percent or the degrees. Once you have that, you're ready to draw your next angle. So what I'm going to do before I move on is I'm going to shorten this line right here. You can erase it just so we have our angle. And this is our 54 degree angle. I'm going to move my protractor over and I'm going to turn it because we have a new starting point. It's the end of the last angle. So the, the process of drawing a circle graph relies on you lining up the protractor each time to measure out where the new starting point is. So we turned it, now it's ready. And our next angle to measure is 72 degrees. So now that we've lined the protractor up, we can measure at 72 degrees. And this time, let's just get our line ready. We go along the outer track, here's 70, 71, 72. So just draw a line. You gotta actually draw the line from the center of the protractor to the outer edge. And there we have our line, but look, it's a little bit off, so we want to fix that. Make it as accurate as possible. There's 72 degrees. There it is. And again, protractor, we moved away. Label the section, that was our supplies. It was a different color. And the percent was 20%. Next we have special activities. Now, special activities is a 198 degree angle. Our protractor only goes up to 180 degrees. So, what I would normally do is skip ahead to the other expenses, make a nice small 36 degree angle, and then whatever is left over is this large angle. But I'd like to show you how to actually draw out a 198 degree angle with a 180 degree protractor. So, what we can do, and this is one way I like to do it, again, line your protractor up. It's going to be upside down now. And of course, when you have a page in front of you, you can turn the page so it's not upside down. You're going to line the protractor up. Okay. Now, <clears throat> to make a 198 degree angle or, or any angle over 180 degrees, um, what I think about is how many degrees does it take to make that angle after 180? 
So I know that 198 degrees is 180 degrees plus 18 degrees, and that will give me a 198 degree angle. So that's one way to actually plot this out. What you would do is first draw your 180 degree angle, which is always a straight line, and then draw a really small 18 degree angle and add them together. So one way to think about it is instead of a 198 degree angle, we have the sum of these two angles. So let's draw that. Here's our protractor. And again, 180 degrees is one of the easiest angles to draw because it's just a straight line. And our straight line is going to go right along the zero. Right to the center. Now, that's 180 degrees. So what we do next is realign, realign the protractor to get a really small 18 degree angle. So let's line this up. And now our zero is in fact moving a little bit. Let me explain. I'm going to use the zero from here. So here's 10. I need to measure 18 degrees. About there. And that looks good except for, look what happened over here. This protractor, when I turned it, the middle shifted. There's a dot in the middle of every protractor. Here's a green arrow. That has to always line up on the center point. Otherwise, our angle is inaccurate. So now we can draw an 18 degree angle. Uh, 18 degrees is this from here to here. So I'm just going to connect the line that goes to the center. And it's a little bit off, so I want to fix that. You, you want to be as accurate as possible. There we go. And now I don't need my protractor anymore. I can move it out of the way. And let's see what we should do next. That 180 degree line that we drew here, we don't need that anymore. Because this whole chunk right here is the special activities section of 198 degrees. So I'm going to put special activities, 55%. And this little chunk right here is what's left over. It's the other expenses, or 10%. Now, when you're setting this up, as careful as you are, you should still check that last remaining angle. I didn't have to measure it because it's what's left. But if we were accurate and I measured, I should get 36 degrees. Let's see if we got it. It's okay if you don't. It just means to go back and rethink it. When you don't get it, the most common problems, again, are when the center does not line up with the middle, or the zero line is not where you need to be, or the protractor might move when you try to use it. Those are pretty common mistakes. So when I measure this, you can see that the other is about 37 degrees, pretty close. You have three degrees of freedom, which means it could be as high as 39 degrees, three above or three below, so as low as 33 degrees.